All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep for Wednesday. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. And without further ado, let's hop over to the board. I actually hit that button a little faster than I expected to. My trigger fingers are, are a little itchy this morning. So uh, sorry for cutting that intro short by a couple seconds. But um, let's hop over here real fast. Uh, hey, before we do, I did want to tell you just a quick mention um, we do have the app out now, so um, if you want to get uh, pushes and all the other good stuff, you can go everything from shopping to show schedule, uh, to watch the shows, to uh, the daily sit reps on the blogs, prayer channel. Uh, it's all on there, and it's a free download and app. It's currently available uh, inside um, the iOS, the Apple iPhone stuff. I think there's a slight delay with it on Android, but it should be out. Again, it's free. Uh, and uh, it'll help you get everything right there at your fingertips from a Monkey Works perspective. And so uh, it does have push notifications and all the other good stuff, but it, it basically will emulate our website, plus it draws in uh, the other aspects, uh, kind of putting it all tied together for you uh, so you can go uh, one stop uh, and, and get it all. So uh, anyway, there is that. Now let's get over here to Skyglass. Just to show you what we've got going on, uh, it is a pretty busy today. Now, this is a roll-up of air refuelers, C-17s, and the like, um, uh, C-130s. But you can see, again, East Coast heavy concentration. Starting to see some branching out here. These look like some flights that are, that are uh, getting ready to bolt into a different area. Uh, northeast and uh, out here. Uh, don't forget, you got Flashbang headed into that Chicago area this afternoon. I'm sure he's going to be hanging out with the Kenyan because uh, that is his old stomping grounds. And so, um, but we'll get to all that here in just a second. So let's talk a little bit about what we have up in the air uh, first and foremost. Then I'm going to drive down into or drill down into some, uh, some topics that I think uh, could be an indicator that we are getting bamboozled once again, uh, similar to this Uranium One deal. Okay. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, here in just a second okay so don't go anywhere we're going to get into this so let's take a quick look at the watch list right now uh currently up we've got three uh e6s up over the u.s those are airborne command centers so you're talking to the icbms uh looks like uh, and then we've got that q4 drone up right on the border of canada doing some spying again and then we have some of the blue and white tails on the move uh one of the forge birds headed into chicago uh, ahead of uh, flashbang. So I uh, want to point that one out. And then if we get over here to the EU, just show you what we've got. Now remember, this is only the watch list. We'll look at the other stuff as it rolls up here in just a second. Uh, but um, you can see uh, we've got a couple of priority air transports up. That's going to be your Pat Bird's little G5. And then the E3 that is doing some spying over France. Uh, those are four data grab circles when you see them doing that man in the middle. So somebody is being watched closely in France at the moment. That's going on right now. And so uh, then we get over here to the Black Sea side of the house. I uh, just want to show you that is uh, uh, one of the NATO E3s up in the region. That could be because, and I'll show you why, I think we've got a lot of fighter presence in the general area right now. So... Um, but not the same spine we've had over the last day or so. So let me just show you that as we get into it. This was yesterday, um, and I just want to show you the amount of spy birds that were up in that region. Again, that, um, that, that one little seaport right there to the left of the Black Sea is getting a lot of attention. And then they are running right along the, the Ukraine-Belarus area again, very frequently, uh, almost daily, grabbing, ga grabbing intel. And so... Uh, but you can see that's uh, uh, the layers as they get into this. But this is a very uh, interesting, uh, I think, I, I don't know. To me, it's something is definitely going on in that region um, that they have eyes on and big concerns. Could be, uh, we've talked about Club K's before. It could very well be uh, a Club K issue where they're worried about uh, because, again, remember, we've got troops and NATO forces just a hop, skip, and away from that. So if you were to launch a Club K missile out of one of those cargo ships, uh, you would be basically right at their front door. And so it, they would have seconds to react once that thing got airborne because it's, it's probably, uh, by the time they detected it, 
supersonic. Um, yeah, I say seconds, probably, uh, you know, a minute or two. Uh, you'd know something was coming inbound, but that'd be about it. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, we looked at the, um, uh, the watch list from yesterday. Now let's get into the heavy lifts today. I'll just show you, again, East Coast centric. It does look like we've got some activity uh, kind of bolting out of the Northeast headed back across the drink. Now these are C-130s, which is an interesting deal. Normally we're seeing uh, a lot of C-17s do that. There are a couple C-17s sprinkled in there, but you see the C-130s uh, that look to be headed up in that general region. Now we get over here to the um, EU, and again, you can see we're continuing to uh, to feed the machine, right? We've got uh, uh, stuff going on now. We've expanded a little bit into Spain. We got some things there near Tripoli. Now, remember, the Soviets have a lot of presence right there in uh, Libya, um, and so for us to be in, uh, headed into Tripoli is pretty pretty um, big. So, and it looks like some stuff down in Israel. Looks like we visited there um, as well. No telling what we put in. Could have been some more of those. Uh, missile defense systems and then right on the border there's our little feeder uh, right on the Ukraine border and then up here uh, into the Baltics so that uh, seems to be kind of the daily feed now okay uh, one thing's for sure you know where it's going to go hot just because you're watching where the where the aircraft are going in and out of on a regular basis okay now if we do the big roll up let's just take a look at this you can see it on the screen now uh, but let me just do this I did a screen grab uh, let's look at the refuelers because we looked at the heavy lifts and then we'll kind of tie it all together. That's your refuelers today over Florida. Remember, we've got that big um, exercise going on right off the coast of uh, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, so that could be why they're feeding. But of course, those air refuelers look to be over on the Gulf side of Florida. A lot of air refuelers up. Got this one coming back from across the drink, it looks like. And then let's get over to uh to europe real fast and let's take a look at what we've got there now this is an interesting deal because you're going to notice uh over over germany um we've got some air refueling activity up so that would indicate probably fighters but notice here that there are more refuelers in that general region that's a good indicator that we've got fighters up in that general region right now um which is uh that that kind of takes us to the next phase that means that um uh, we are trying to protect the assets that are going into the field over there, and uh, we've put uh, right there on that border um, a pretty significant amount of fighter presence, okay? So, uh, again, starts to kind of escalate, doesn't it? All right, now, this is, again, a roll-up air refuelers, C-17, C-130s. Uh, you can see it is, it is booming right now, East Coast-centric, uh, as always. Uh, but then it's starting to bleed over. Looks like we got some stuff headed into the Midwest and a little bit of activity up here in the Seattle Tacoma area as well. So today's a very busy day, uh, at least from what it appears to be from a military perspective. All right. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to take you over real fast to um, we're going to get over here and show you the volcanic activity just so you can see. Uh, we've got two firing down here. That is Krakatoa, and, uh, and then this is Simaru. Um, and then we had one right up here, kind of in between um, uh, Russia and Alaska. Uh, that is um, pretty, that one's been active on and off. So uh, at least the wind seems to be taking it a different direction today. Before it was popping out over here the, over the uh, Pacific area. And then we've got these ash alerts down um, in uh, Central America down to South America, okay? So again, we just keep our eye on this. Uh, it will become relevant one day for sure. Uh, and you probably know my reasons why, right? I mean, that's, that'll be biblical, but, uh, but for right now, from a pilot perspective, that's what we're watching. Now, this is that NATO bird. Uh, NATO 11 is up today. Again, uh, Constana is the spot that we are watching, but notice man in the middle doing that data grab, perfect circle. So there is somebody in here in this port, they are watching for and grabbing all of their data. Uh, that bad dude right there is basically an airborne cell tower, okay. All right, over here to Flashbang. Uh, let's look at what's going on with this dumpster fire today. Uh, looks like he's headed up to Chicago. I'm sure, again, he's gonna be hanging out with the Kenyan up there, uh, but 
Um, he's talking about Putin's invasion and his uh, basically how he has just totally ruined food supplies for the world. That stuff was already happening before then. All it did was just compound things. We already know that. But, uh, you know, they always try and get those talking points into his public schedule. Uh, and then again, Putin's price hike. Blame it on Putin, right? <laughs> so uh, best defense is a good offense, right? So, uh, but anyway, and then it looks like he's trying to do some fundraising for the national, the Democratic National Committee. Uh, I, I can only imagine the sound bites out of today. I can just sense the confusion already. Uh, he's going to be all over the board and probably sounding like a babbling uh, baby at some point. So, okay, let's get over here to Shanghai. I just want to show you what we've got happening now. The, uh, the boats are still stacked up. That looks to be they're kind of staged heading in and out. We've got a pretty set, steady flow in and out of the Shanghai port, which is a good sign. Still have a lot of stuff backed up, um, but it is starting to move. So that is a, that's a relief. But remember, for every day of stagnation there, it's, it's six weeks for them to recover. So they went on over a month. They were almost six weeks. So do the quick maths. Not a good scenario. These ships that we're looking at are parked out here, ready to go in. The red ones are oil, green ones are cargo. The stuff you see inbound up tight uh, in, in the port is actually stuff being unloaded or reloaded, okay? So um, it looks like we're down to about a half a dozen. So in the next coming days, you're going to see that port empty out. Now, I do want to show you the Suez Canal area because uh, it is under construction and so it is slowing things down to get through they also just jack their rate for pass through uh, and so that's just a data point but remember it feeds the machine and uh, if they can't get through that suez canal area or it's backed up they got to go all the way around um, and so this is the area we're watching this is Const uh, constanta uh, again you got some oil tankers out here we've got a handful of cargo ships sitting in the region um, but uh, that's the area that we're going to kind of try and watch um, and keep our eye on. That's what they're watching. So there's got to be a reason for it, like I said. All right. So, again, this is uh, going to be the watch spot. All right. Okay. Let's get over here to the SAM flights. Uh, this one is uh, not showing in terms of the flight, but this is a, a flight coming out of South America, Paraguay. Um, it looks like it was headed... Headed northbound out of here. That's going to be basically a dignitary or somebody from the U.S. on one of the blue and whites that was headed down here into uh, South America. Uh, headed northbound, and then they went off radar. So no telling where they're headed. Uh, but it's always interesting to watch them as you watch all the politics in play around the world, right? Okay, Star Wars map. Uh, looking pretty light in terms of cyber attack traffic today. Uh, we'll keep our eye on that. Again, this will be a pretty good early indicator uh, when things are going to go hot because you'll see a bunch of our stuff get attacked. All right. Now over to the shenanigans. House passes $40 billion more in Ukraine aid. That's on top of what they've already passed, $40 billion. Now, why is this important? I want to show you guys something. Remember... We go back to the whole pay-to-play thing, Uranium One. You may remember that all this stuff was happening. This is when uh, the United States was being raped and pillaged by, its, uh, by the people we elected, all the officials from governors all the way up to uh, agency guys to all the way up to the, the president. So, uh, but if you take a look at the stuff going on in here, Remember, that whole Uranium One deal was pay-to-play, right? There were basically uh, people would uh, be given money from the State Department or our DOD for a program, and then in turn, the people that were receiving that money for the program would make a contribution to the Clinton Foundation or the Clinton Initiative, okay? S I think, based on what I'm seeing in Ukraine, the same stuff is going on right now. We are basically sending them money after money after money, and somebody's foundation... I'm willing to bet is getting pumped full of cash right now. All right. And it's probably go look at the, the people that are showing up over there. But notice 40 billion more dollars in Ukraine aid with very few questions asked. All right. Now you go over here to the spend and you look at the U.S. Now this is from March 27. This is a month old. It's already a lot bigger than this. But if you just look at the spend line on the top, why is the United States outspending everybody else? like 
uh, 100 to 1. This is absolutely insane. And the only reason it would make sense is if you got some kind of scheme going over here where people are getting paid for it, right? Now, if you look at the stuff that they're doing, these are all the military assets, right, that we we're pushing in. Of course, we're not even really pushing it to a point where we're just loaning it to them. Now, that's the other shenanigan that goes into this. Uh, but let's get over here and take a look at the players that are bumping in to this war game and cashing in. Now, we've already seen Pelosi pop over. Uh, let me get to the right screen here. Uh, on this $40 billion in new Ukraine a uh, aid, front and center, uh, we know she is part of that. We know her kids are part of that. Um, this all ties in. You got Schumer involved in it. It's the same snakes uh, that were involved early on um, when, uh, when Trump was in office and he was highlighting all this stuff and the corruption going on in the, UK, in the Ukraine. So um, notice Trump Jr. here. You can't buy baby for me in the United States right now, but Congress is voting today to send $40 billion to Ukraine. Uh, yep, they did, and it has been approved, and that money is going over. Now, let's just kind of put it in perspective. Uh, <laughs> Russia's entire military budget for 2021 was estimated to be $65 billion. So we are adding $40 billion on top of the other. We've just basically uh, spent what Russia spent in an entire year to pump money into this. Now, you tell me that this, isn't, this doesn't reek of another one of these pay-to-play schemes. Um, like I said, watch the key players going in and their involvement and watch, uh, watch their bank accounts uh, grow, okay? You wonder how Zelensky has $850 million in his bank account? Uh, that's why, right? It's all of this pay-to-pay -pay stuff. And so, anyway, here's the other one here. Biden signs a bill reviving the World War II era Lend-Lease program to Ukraine. Basically, we're going to give it to you. You just pay us back whenever you get a chance. You know that's not going to happen. If anything, he's taking arms out of the hands of our own soldiers that we are probably going to need here pretty soon. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, again, this is just a giant scam, folks. I'm telling you, there are people right now that are making money hand over fist, and it's the same players we probably saw in the Uran Uranium One scandal, okay, that has yet come to light and has yet have anybody been arrested for it okay now war is a racket just kind of give you a visualized uh deal like i've always said war is an economy as you see these other economies around the world start to go into the tank war typically comes out uh, rearing its ugly head because that's how they stimulate their economy back into uh, a productive state okay and so if you just look at the u.s and russian arms transfers by country, how much money we are giving stuff to other countries, it's pretty remarkable, incredible. So you can see the U.S. is uh, almost 2x what Russia does in terms of giving everybody arms to go fight conflicts. So should be criminal, I'll be honest with you. Um, okay, now let's get over here to Biggs Army Airfield. I do want to show you what's going on lately. We do have the spa birds coming back in from Tucson. I think we have... Uh, a new phase of immigration uh, rolling through. We've got a departure here. This is going to be a cargo spot, uh, sh uh, bird or national cargo. It doesn't necessarily mean it has cargo on it. Uh, could be outfitted for passengers. Headed to Philly. Um, again, Philly is one of those locations that have been known for the immigration side. So it would appear uh, with these Sierra Pacific flights, Harrisburg, um, that we are actually moving immigrants on this uh, phase today. Uh, or this leg of the phase. So not seeing troops. I'm seeing indications of immigration. All right. Same thing over here. This is Lakehurst. Uh, the only thing I see going down is a reach flight headed down to Guatemala City. And so um, that is the only one. And so we will watch to see what happens there. Um, but anyway, it's a C-17 headed southbound. All right. Over to the Camber flights, just show you, we've got four on the board. Sophia Airport, uh, that's one of our big, big presence right here in, uh, um, in Southern Europe. Again, that is, uh, you know, Bulgaria, and, um, and then you got um, Hungary up here. And so this looks like we got a flight leaving right now. That's going to be troop-related. All of these are troop-related. And so, uh, but just want to point out, notice that the, you don't really see them on the map. You just see a... Takeoff um, location, nowhere 
does it show the destination, okay? But more troops on the move, all right? So we, we uh, appear to definitely be staging things up, okay? And this has been a good, a good solid trend as well as the East Coast for a couple months now. All right, Royal Air Force uh, got a couple flights up. That was really busy this morning. It's since settled down. Most of it's in and out of Europe. Uh, do have one bubbled up there into Scotland, but uh, the rest of them uh, appear to be uh, down here supporting uh, the same locations as the U.S. All right, Omni. Now, we had one drop-off that came in from um, Japan into Seattle. That is gone. Now we've got Cherry Point to March. Uh, we've got a couple flights that are heading into March Air Force Base. Not really sure what's going on with that one, especially coming out of Cherry Point. Uh, that would indicate military to military, but we have seen um, immigrants go from that route as well. So uh, don't know if that's going to be immigration or troop related. If it is troop related, then you've got some Cherry Point folks probably coming into March who will come over here into Asia. All right. All right, let's get into the Ruskies again. Landed one hour, 13 minutes ago. Just want to show you, this is the flight we were tracking the other day. Uh, and I said it was kind of an interesting deal. This, this guy had flown down, looked like he was headed into Libya. Uh, but we're going to go look at his flight history and see uh, where he has gone. But um, he is now, he flew out of Oman and he's in uh, Kyrgyzstan. I can't pronounce any of this stuff, I'm telling you. Uh, not without coughing or having some kind of a phlegm in my in my throat to uh, to kind of roll it out there, uh, but anyway, uh, now I see what Biden feels like. Right, can't pronounce half the stuff on your screen. All right, so um, this is what we were watching. This is Monday. Today's Wednesday. So this thing went to Algeria, went to Libya, exactly where we thought he was headed. Okay, then from there he went over to Egypt, and then uh, from there to Sib and to. Uh, the Shambi. And so he has been pretty busy. It's a small aircraft, not a large one, but again, it's, um, it's like our dignitaries. It's going to be like our blue and whites. All right. Okay. This is going to be your immigrant flights. I just want to show you the ones that are down here in um, Central and South America. That one's headed into Bogota. Now these are coming from our border towns, which uh, would indicate that you'd be out processing some folks unless We've got this stuff tied into our immigrant uh, machine, which is supporting Amazon, really. Um, uh, don't see any flights. I mean, these things up here look all to be headed kind of border related and then outside of the country. So um, not seeing anything hockey related because these guys also fly around the hockey teams because uh, they just landed that contract. But I think hockey season's over. So uh, that'll help us kind of keep this thing straight. Uh, but you can see Westchester, uh, White Plains. Again, that's one of the locations where we get the midnight flights. But that one's headed down to McAllen, Border Town. Um, again, I just, uh, this is just, yeah, you don't have words for it. We are being uh, bamboozled all the way around. <laughs> it's, it's just insane. So, okay. This is actually going to be one of those Y-20. Uh, looks a lot like our C-17s. This is a China bird. I just happened to catch it flying. Uh, up here in China, and it looks like it just landed uh, in the Sichuan province. But uh, this is like a C-17. It's a big cargo mover. These are the ones that we saw or witnessed uh, fly uh, into uh, Serbia and deliver a whole bunch of equipment. Okay. All right. And lastly, as we get over to this side of it, i just show you the sniffer is on the move, and I'm not talking about flashbang. This is... Uh, landed two hours, 35 minutes ago. Those not familiar when I'm talking about Sniffer, this is a helicopter that has a whole bunch of sensory on it that can basically um, do uh, air quality samples, right? And so they're flying looking for any kind of biological, chemical, nuclear stuff. But it appears to be down in Wilmington, North Carolina right now. Uh, took that flight down, just like I said, landed uh, two hours, 36 minutes ago. And... Um, there you have it. So let's get back over here. Let me show you the TFRs before we close out. Uh, this is Flashbang's travel schedule today. He's headed up here into Illinois. Again, I'm sure we'll have some beautiful sound bites from him today. I, I can just feel confusion in the camp of the enemy today. And so um, I've got some space operations going on here. Remember, we've got out on this general area 
uh, some dogfight stuff going on uh, with National Guard. And um, that's going to be it. So, uh, by the way, uh, this hat right here, if you guys want it, uh, I'm going to post it out to the uh, website this afternoon. It is actually going to be a signed version of me. Uh, I'm going to do that from time to time. It's a show hat. It's the first prototype. We don't have them out there just yet. I haven't had a chance to make them. So this will be out there this afternoon, uh, probably around 3 o'clock. So if you want that hat uh, and it's signed, uh, it'll be available. So um, and it's the only reason I'm wearing a hat today. So anyway, all right, listen, that's going to be it. You guys, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, bell for notification. And uh, for those in the chat, I will see you over in the Q&A here in just a minute. Um, everybody else, you guys keep that powder dry. Stay frosty. Things are definitely changing. And we'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at MonkeyWorksUS.com.